Welcome to Tokyo on a not so beautiful winter day. <laughs> the weather could be better. That's not going to stop me and my friend Dean here from walking it. How you doing, everybody? It's currently seven degrees. Seven degrees. Is it? Degrees. Okay. Degrees, well, it's not yeah. too too bad. It could be worse, but it is chilly. It's not the perfect day for walking, but we're going to do this from Tokyo Station. Well, this is like Ginza, Hibiya Station, through Maranouchi, the backside of Tokyo Station. Then we're going to get to Akihabara via Kanda. I have a map right here, give you an idea of the route. It says about, I don't know, like one hour. I think we could do better than that. <laughs> yeah, I think you're going to take longer than that, but let's, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> now, when you do come to tra travel anywhere, not just Tokyo, I find that you walk a lot. Yeah. Right? And I know walking's become a, a trend. I try to get in like 10,000 steps. It's all, you know, you want to walk as much as possible, but it's good for the body. So we're doing this experiment and we learned about, one of the reasons I wanted to do this was we're going to pass a stu shoe store, which I thought was really doing something super cool. But check this out. I have on brand new sneakers. These white sneakers are going to be joining us on this trip and we're going to see how dirty they get. They, they are so white right now. Right? Like, <laughs> I feel like it, they're very bright. It's a little yeah. much. It's a little much. We're going to walk in this direction. I wanted to start here because, you know, over there, about 25 meters, if you went in this direction, you'd be able to see this, the, the new statue of Godzilla, which is pretty incredible. I think. Uh, um, the Hibia Midtown building, a lot of restaurants down there, really cool. And I like this scene because you got in the distance, you have the Shinkansen and the Yamanote line going by with Ginza in the background. I couldn't have timed go. that any better. Nice. There's the Shinkansen and then that's the uh, uh, Tohoku, the Keihin Tohoku line going by there. I think the Keihin Tohoku line's going faster. And there's another Shinkansen coming in. Wow. It's kind of this surreal. You, you would never have been able to do that if you tried. No, it's just, it's Q just luck. trains. Well, can you do that with Beautiful. the weather and turn off the rain? <laughs> that was really cool. All right, let's get moving, Dean, because right. we got a ways to go. Now, Dean has a channel called Runaway Japan. Yes, I do. Yeah, I am um, unfortunately not as active as I should be, but um, that channel is all about doing adventurous stuff in Japan. And uh, right now, I do most of that with my kids. And you've so been in Japan for how, how many years now? Uh, We're going about 13. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I'm, I'm a long-termer. I'm, I'm like you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm here to stay. After you get past 10, you're pretty yeah. much uh, settled in uh, strongly into Japan. So have you done this walk before? No, actually, I'm out of my territory because I started my time in Tokyo around the Shibuya Ebisu Meguro area. Right. So that's the place I feel most comfortable in and, and know best. And so now around Ginza and Tokyo Station is a little bit out of my territory. I think you know this area pretty well. Yeah, this, yeah. this back area, it's interesting. About 15 years ago, a lot of government buildings were here. It was a boring, boring area. The buildings around you look at it, they don't look very inspirational, very, very like dark and boring. And that's, that's the vibe of the modern Uchi from uh, when I first came here, when you first came here, pretty much. Sure. But about 15 years ago, this started to change, where they put in nicer streets. You can see uh, there are lights on these trees, illuminated. Uh, it gives it, it it's in, in particular, very beautiful at the Christmas time. And uh, they're doing that because they want to make more like a sustainable feeling, make it more like a park feeling, get people to come here, not when they're just working, but when you know, on the weekends, on, uh, after work, to right, stick around. Right. So they're inviting really cool, trendy shops and coffee oh, yeah. shops and all that kind of stuff, right? Well, there's a Pat yeah. Patagonia over there to the left and uh, there's an Allbird shoe store to the right, I believe, and that's the shoes that I'm wearing here. And one of the reasons why I got curious about doing this, oh, there, there is right there, over there. There's the uh, Yurakusho station and the big camera. So we go right past that, the International Forum. A lot of you who've been in Japan have certainly gone past this store in the past. It's a vibrant area. I sometimes will just do live streamings in the, in the uh, plaza there. But on the weekends, they will close down the street and make it a park. And, and it's, yeah, it's, it's really hiroi, wide. 
spacious here I compared think so. to other places in Japan. Not like it feels more like a, an American street in some way, you know, big wide sidewalk and yeah, that must be fun when they close this off and you can walk down the middle of the street. Oh, it seriously yeah. is. And you can see that they're actually grass is growing here. They put in some like AstroTurf looking grass that they, they wheel out from the basement and it gives it a, a, certainly a really cool feel to it. So let me introduce to you what the path that we're going to be walking looks like. You can see here, that's Tokyo. It's a big city, a lot of subway stations. I do a lot of walking when I'm here. Tokyoites walk a lot. This is where we're starting. This is the Hibiya Park on the bottom there. Uh, right there, Hibiya Station. There's the Yamanote and the Shinkansen line, you see. And we're walking down between the buildings here, these office buildings. Tokyo Station on the left side, you see the old canopy and the Shinkansens. This is Kanda Station right there. And then we switch over uh, to Akihabara. We're gonna be going over the, um, I guess it's the Kanda River. There's a really nice footbridge over there. And there's the very famous uh, Sega, which is now, um, uh, I forget what, what the name of that sh the shop is. It's another gaming arcade. But uh, we'll be, we'll be, that'll be our final destination of this live stream. Look, we're hitting the buildings in this, uh, in this uh, um, video here I'm showing you. And then I'm gonna pan out and you can see the Imperial Palace. Walking is a great way to see everything um, street level here. You could take the subway, but you, you miss a lot of that. You can see here, they, you can't actually, it's a pedestrian zone and they put the times here. This is what makes this such an interesting uh, change to Tokyo. I, I guess it was about 15 years ago, but I, it was during the Olympics and the Rugby World Cup in 2019, they had a ton of events in the back streets of Marunouchi and Yurakucho. And you can see tons of these uh, uh, very trendy it's, shops. It is very trendy, isn't it? More. Yeah. Yeah. Starting from here, this is the Marunouchi Fifth Street, and you can see there's some maps um, showing the Imperial Palace on the left side. And this is where I got my shoes. <laughs> oh, birds. <laughs> this is the All Bird Shop. I didn't know much about this company until you introduced them to me. Yeah, Dean. I'm a fan of All Birds. I've been wearing them for a few years. I was attracted to them because of uh, sustainability and then you start wearing them as, as you are now and you right. realize they're really comfortable, right? They're, yeah, you know yeah. that uh, Bruno Mars, I, was, I think everybody was watching Bruno Mars on Instagram walking, have you guys seen that? It has like 50 million views or something. Walking around Tokyo, uh, he's, they said that he stopped in. He did, yeah, with no, no security, no management, just walked in on his own. That's pretty crazy. That's pretty crazy. <laughs> Picked up a new pair of all birds, yeah. So this is cool. the shop here. I thought that was cool. And then I went in and I picked, up a, I picked up a pair of their shoes. So the reason why I picked the white ones, do you want to say it or should I tell them? There's a reason why. Go on, There's go a on. reason why I picked the white ones here. So uh, I'll, I, I'll, let me show you the inside of the shop here. I didn't, I don't, I didn't want to <laughs> film. Oh, they're waving to me. How you doing? They're wa oh, you want to see this fast staff here? They're That's waving cute. to me here. There they are. <laughs> Good. So they're doing something that I thought was really cool. And Dean told me about this. And I said, really? Well, I'm a big fan of Tokushima, of traveling around Japan, getting out, of the country, getting out to the countryside. But they do something. And Tokushima is famous for In indigo. Indigo dyeing. Indigo yeah. dyeing. Yeah. So what they're doing is you get, you, you get things that are white or maybe have gotten. Um, and, and Peso's here saying that uh, it pays us from Australia. This is like a New Zealand company. Uh, yeah, I, I think it sure. was co-founded between uh, a guy from New Zealand and a guy from California. Okay, so, yeah. Yeah, so it's an American company now, but it's gone, it's gone worldwide. It's, it's global, uh, yeah. Yeah, and uh, yeah, started off as a sustainable comfort sneaker. And now they're doing running shoes and the, the range is expanding a little bit. So you've, you've got one of the classics, right? The, the wool. Yeah, these are wool. Well, I don't know what it, what, which what name the wool runner i think that's right yeah but i i got it because it was super white and i feel uncomfortable with the color but the the actual weight of the shoe is so good and uh i'm hoping to mess these up a little bit so we can dye them i want to i want to see what it looks like when it gets the indigo blue that's like japan's that's why when you have the samurai blue that's like the a japanese color this right. indigo blue that's the inside of the shop. I, and, and then uh, the shoes that I eventually got were these here, and that's gonna be pretty cool to dye these uh, puppies. 
and see what they look like. When so is it? When is it? They're doing that dying event with so, so at the end, end of, at the end of March. They have okay. this dying event, and so you've got about what three we three or four weeks to get these nice and dirty. Wait, do I have to uh, put my hands in there like that too? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it gives it a really cool character to see the dyeing of the shoes like this. So, um, the the blue, I guess everything gets blue, right? Even yeah. the, the rubber on the bottom of it. But these are the dirty shoes that they had before that you might throw out. Right. And then boom, it so like the, renews so, so the it. Point, the point behind it is that with shoes, it's really hard to recycle them because they're made of multiple materials. And so if you have a white sneaker or a quite a light colored sneaker and you get a small mark on it, it's normally kind of game over if you're conscious about what people think of you because you have some stains on your shoes. Right. That's it. You just throw them away. And of course, as a, a brand that's trying to be more sustainable, they've found this way of kind of giving a product a second life because you can you can dye it and turn it into a, a new right. shoe. Basically. I, I'm walking because I'm starting to freeze. So I, I, <laughs> I appreciate. It. I think that's. I think that that. Bye guys. I think that that's really cool. So let's try this experiment. And thanks to all of you guys here for watching as we walk in the rain. It kind of makes it, puts a little extra challenge on this. Now, I'm avoiding the puddles. Is that something I should be doing? I just don't think you have to care, do you? I don't have like, to like... care. I don't have to care. Hey, comment. Let's, well, let's see if we can pick some. Let's make this live stream interesting. Thank you for that, comment writer. Let's get this nice beautiful wide so you, you can feel like you're here too I usually oh, come I usually will walk and I'll walk through this street area because it's just so nice to do it compared to walking along the Yamanote line All right, we've got some weak signal here there's the international forum this is the weightlifting events for the Olympics over there this is a very cool uh, piece of architecture, right? This building, the yeah. International Forum. It's, it's like shaped like a boat. Or, right. Or, I yeah, guess. the inside yeah. looks yeah. like a, like yeah. a inside like of a, a whale yeah. too, yeah. in a way. And the um, um, other side of the International Forum is also the o Oedo, I think it's called the Oedo Antique Market. And they have uh, tons of shops selling stuff that probably have been in some for quite a while. Yeah, treasure hunting. Yeah. Later onto the channel. Oh, there's a Morton Steakhouse. What? Morton's of sugar. It's interesting because sometimes you don't know uh, something that you saw six <laughs> dog, John Lobb. I don't know. What the heck, you. man? Stop yeah. sending me that. Reading an only in Japan wall somewhere. That would be good. Maybe that's what we should build an office right here. This is an interesting little building, and I know that there's there's not a great signal uh, until we get to about the end. Amanote line, it's way down there now. As the train gets closer to Tokyo Station. It would be the palace in the other direction, would it? Right, that's, cor yeah. that's correct. The palace would be uh, the, the it's, big wide opening in that yeah, direction. Yeah, it's so rare not to have the skyscrapers, right, yeah. in Tokyo. So this, the, I know that there's no signal here. Um, this used to be, gosh, an old like warehouse, I believe. And if they've uh, renovated it, keeping a, a portion of it, and this I think even Taco Bell had an okonomiyaki taco, right? <laughs> it was just pretty crazy. They, they ended up uh, taking their food and they There's a lot of really neat art. This, this is from this the guy. Rugby World Cup. So my first time to see that. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, the, during the Rugby World Cup, this was a really vibrant area. Wouldn't want to tackle him, would you? No, you're not going to go very far. The guy's made of bronze. That's a nice little cafe. Maronouchi Hop.
And so apparently the signal's not uh, not uh, perfect here, or at all, <laughs> I should say. But don't worry, the, a copy of this will be uploaded onto the channel, so you, you'll be able to see it all uninterrupted as we walk towards uh, Akihabara. It's something of a challenge. So you said this this ten thousand step thing is is somewhat trending these days because I think that that ten thousand step idea of getting healthy has been around for a while, but it like, has. people have started mixing that with their travel. I think so. so. I think walking in general has gotten uh, I wouldn't say trendy. Just a lot more people are do, are doing it more. Uh, the podcasting world has has Picked brought up that. A yeah. Well, you don't need, you know, running is good, but if you can't do that, just going out and walking really uh, helps with the mind. That looks really good. You smell that. What is that, like sizzling meat? It does smell good. Oh my gosh. There's, there's some bento trucks here. This one is um, Okonomiyaki? Is that, I was just talking about it. Looks like they're doing like a... These business areas, there's a lot of people working here, so it, it comes like 12 o'clock and then oh, everybody sure, yeah. just suddenly appears, right? So you need these extra trucks because the restaurants just wouldn't be able to handle everyone. Oh, well, yeah, people just, and it's, in particular during the pandemic, the uh, uh, food trucks started to come in more and more because, the, again, no one was going to restaurants or they couldn't because the hours were changed. But if you had a food truck, you were able to uh, get your food or and actually just keep your business going. Uh, during that era, but now um, it's just interesting because you're bringing in new kinds of restaurants to areas that might be missing some kind of like okonomiyaki restaurant yeah, or yeah, yeah. some yeah. kind of uh, th that grilled beef restaurant or whatever that would look real and good. They normally they normally are really good and very affordable. The food, yeah. There's Tokyo Station. We'll get a better view of it when we get to the center here. But I like this spot for a reason. One of the things I love about the Maranouchi side of Tokyo is of all this open space, and we can thank the emperor for it. You really can't build anything wow. here anyways. And you see there's a tripod right there, I think, for light. There's a lot of wedding pictures get taken here. And if you come right in the middle, which is right here, check it out. It's just such a really beautiful scene from a distance. And uh, it's a postcard. Uh, this Tokyo station is modeled after uh, Amsterdam Central Station and the architecture certainly is unique for Tokyo. Yeah, it's nice here. And the Imperial Palace in this direction, there's no buildings there. There's mm -hmm. a moat. And then you have the emperor who's probably staying warm. I forget, is that the Palace Hotel? I stayed there on, for a job during the pandemic with Peter. We got it. We got to ride the Shinkansen uh, on a on a job going up to Aomori, which was so cool. Nice. We had our own Shinkansen, Dean. How do you have your own Shinkansen? I don't know. <laughs> you know, like when it says the desk, like it says um, uh, Nozomi. Or, or. It says Nozomi Hikari on the board. Our Shinkansen said party. No. P a r t y no. on the on the on the signage board. It was so cool. Wow. That was on it. I don't know if you've seen that episode. Peter and I go up to Aomori and we eat like 13 ekiben. <laughs> just and just showing the ra the ride up there on the Tohoku Shinkansen. It's not a lot of people go up to Tohoku up to in the north of Tokyo, so I thought that was a, a pretty cool idea and JR worked with us on that. So cool, we could uh, cool. Yeah. Uh, Tohoku's nice. Yeah, lot of lot of good I want to stop for a second, Dean. Yeah. A lot of people ask me when they're around Tokyo Station just uh, the day before yesterday when I was here, someone said, where's a vending machine? Where do I even get a drink? In this area, it's so expensive up above. Everything of everyday value is down below. You have coffee shops, you have a convenience store. There's a supermarket down here and a ton of restaurants. I've gotten um, green tea uh, goodies from this shop down in the basement. So everything is basically underground. When you can't find it above ground, go underground. So that's that, a, that's a, a great tip, right? I, up up means expensive. Right. Down no means cheap. Well, there's no vending machines. <laughs> Have you noticed that in this in this particular area of Maranouchi on the backside of Tokyo Station, we're getting into Otemachi, which is um, 
very much a business district, and you're going to see it with the taller, mo more modern buildings. Right <laughs> you know, in the center you of Tokyo, You would think right? that, but yeah. that's not the case. If I'm sorry about the signals going in and out, the uh, upload to the. Uh, so we're we're leaving now. We're leaving now the influence of Tokyo State right there. So we can say goodbye to that, and now we're going to be walking towards Kanda. See this on every corner. Well, not well, many corners in New York. Out there, I'm still looking to, to yeah. make friends with this guy. <laughs> Well, it looks nice. Mm. Oh, nice. Well, you know what would make me really happy if they put a Trader Joe's in here? You ever gone to Trader Joe's? No, I don't you know, know that company? No, it's a, it's no, a U.S. No thing. Yeah. There's no Trader Joe's in this area in Japan at all. Not even in Hawaii. You have to go all the way to California to go there. That, that's a good stuff. It keeps sticking with me. We're going to get uh, the signals going to get better as we walk through the business district. I, I really do like this walk, though, because you see so many different things. Like, look at this cafe right outside where they have chairs. But it's, it's darker here. But it also, like, just the vibe, the air here is different, isn't it? Hey John, how easy is it for people to do loop if they're visiting Japan? Like, you, with, I'm just thinking we're, we're obviously we're walking right now, and there's probably options to rent a bike, right? And do that, and I and I see that there's like loops everywhere now. Oh, like the um, motorized the, scooters. Yeah. So is that an option for people? The, the scooters. Um, I, I'm pretty sure you need to have a, register your driver's license oh, online really? with them. Oh. The motorized, the uh, uh, battery-powered bicycles. They're everywhere. They're sponsored by Docomo, NTT Docomo, I think, and you have to register online to rent those as well. Uh, you could take it from one spot and return it to another spot, which is really cool. Uh, but they're not free, you know. Okay. It's a little pricey. So the most convenient is definitely <laughs> these, these things attached yeah, to your legs, right? Yeah, walking yeah. here. <laughs> Speaking of which, there's still un unbelievably... Yeah, I don't see a mark. No. I don't see a mark on them yet. Maybe I should step on your foot a few times. <laughs> <laughs> I'm... But I am actively tr avoiding puddles, so that could be my fault. All right, they, now we're deep into Otemachi area. And, uh, you know, this is where Citibank is. A lot of the international the Bank of America probably has a branch here. All like the massive mega banks that all went under <laughs> like 15 years ago. And the, the Lehman Brothers thing, dare I say it. I think the Aman is in one of these buildings here, which is the, the new hotel. Dokomo, isn't that a Beach Boys song? Right, it's in Tor Toro Poco. <laughs> I, think it, I, I think it could be. <laughs> Long avenues here, wide roads. Yeah, really, like complete contrast to other areas of Tokyo where... Oh, sure. You, you struggle to get one car down the road, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Definitely, yeah, it is... No. Uh, um, it's very different over here. We're getting, we're still following, you can see over there the Yamanote line. So we're still going along that line there. But as we're walking, I think, wasn't there the, bur the burrito restaurant was over here too? Burrito restaurant? Yeah, Frijoles, which is like a local burrito chain, like the Chipotle of Japan. You might not get Chipotle. See, Dean is from the United Kingdom. Yes. Initially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not a good place if you want a burrito. Oh, no? I have to say, yeah. Really? I thought <laughs> maybe, the ethnic food London, in London yes, was yeah. really good. Like yeah. curry. What's the most popular food in, in London? I think it was curry rice or something. Well, I, I do Indian hear chicken curry. tikka masala is like one of our national dishes now. Is it? <laughs> it's really good. I was surprised how good the Indian food in London was. It, but, you know, Tokyo has done this... Um, really really hard to try to make it look more green and they're doing it's, a good job with yeah, it right we're like here in a aren't forest, they? right it does look like this is that cool. yeah look at this this is the, this is like uh, three minutes from tokyo station fine dining yeah fine dining and it looks like you're in a forest and look they they, they, they it, it is a forest 
That is really crazy. What is that restaurant? You know, unless you walk around a lot, you don't find these hidden gems of places. Yeah. New shops. I remember there was like a, you remember the uh, Granny Smith apple pies? I don't know if that's a thing in the UK. We had this in the States. They opened up a shop in Tokyo and I found it just walking around uh, Aoyama a couple of years ago. I thought that was really um, like, what? I didn't get, I don't scan the press releases and find out what, what's new here in Tokyo. You I guess social media kind of does that today. But 10 years ago when that shop popped up, I was like, what? Whoa end up buying an apple pie and then it, I guess it was like a year later it was gone. Oh yeah? Yeah, a lot of that, the shops that, here that are pop-ups. That Granny good. Yeah, you put Bob rates in here. There's no single because we were lost in the forest. <laughs> <laughs> Could very well be the case. That was, that was unique and here we are back in the city to see that forest was, uh, I don't know. I, I, to the walk it adds something different, like a texture to the urban landscape yeah, and that's that's really unique it, it doesn't make you feel like oh we're in Tokyo I, I felt like I'm in Tochigi or something so this architect has done really well then right because yeah that's exactly what he wanted you to say I think yeah he's, he's taking you out of the big city into a tranquil Kango Kuma forest paradise yeah this is yeah. also where that shrine is do you know the uh, um, Masakado uh, shrine I don't think I do he was uh, one of the first samurai ever, like uh, 1,300 years ago. And apparently uh, his head got hacked off oh. in Kyoto and it flew all the way to Tokyo and landed oh. over there. And they have a shrine dedicated to him, but it's an interesting history. Peter and I came here uh, about four years ago and, and, and talked about that history. But over the course of the last 100 years, they, moved the, they tried to move the shrine or build around the shrine and all these accidents and like devastating, like loss of life started to occur because they were messing around with the Whoa. shrine. So they said that the shrine is haunted. Spooky. Yeah. And then they started, then they moved the shrine and built around it and said, we don't care about your, the, the um, supernatural stuff anymore. And I guess it was fine. I hope it was fine. I hope it was fine, but maybe Masakado <laughs> uh, has made peace with us mortals. So where, where have we got to now? What's the, I'm not this, sure. Do you have your Google the, map out? To, the Tokyo eh? Otomachi Station. Yeah. There's always a, f a, f a lot of food trucks here next to that orange statue. Oh. Uh, it looks like we're about half halfway -ish. Halfway, okay. Halfway, yeah. 31 minutes to go of what is probably an hour journey if you include, you know, some zigzagging. past the Imperial Palace, you see all the rain here. We've passed Tokyo Station, we're heading towards uh, Kanda Station. So after the, in this area, yeah, I think yeah, things Kitori. are, yeah, I yeah. think the, things are a little bit more, uh, where we're gonna be going on the up, feel that. You feel the vibes, it takes, it takes a little time. There's a Seto lemon food truck. What kind of cuisine is this? Oh so wow, fuchi. so it's got like, uh, lemon chicken and stuff and here's another oh hey there's my friend Churrasco. the brazilian oh wow let's go say hi oh hey <laughs> 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 so, 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 hi <laughs> it, it is <laughs> hey it's it often in my neighborhood cafe ah so wait good that <laughs> It's a, yeah, I know them. Oh, I like that. I know, hey, I my love friend, the, the Brazilian trucks. guy. Yeah, I was like, gosh, if I had some time, I might, I might sneak a, a Brazilian churrascos bento. It smells oh, good. The smell is incredible. You, should right? we get some? You want to get something? I mean, they have sandwiches and stuff. It might warm us up a bit. Yeah, you want to do that? Like, is that, is right, that interesting? Let's, let's for, that. What do you guys think? What do people want to see us eat? Like, do we do we get... Do you have the time? I have the time, yeah. Yeah. Oh, the, the actual time, or do I have the time? All right, we can get like a wrap sandwich or something. Yeah, it's quarter to one, so it's kind of 
It's lunchtime, okay, right? Okay, let's do it. All right. All right yeah, he said we're cool with, he's cool with filming. So we're going to put this Super Chats... Mis ただ、食べましょう。食べ、食べましょう。はい。ただ、食べ、食べ。ただ、食べ、食べ。ただ、食べ、食べ。ただ、食べ、食べ。ただ、食べ、食べ。ただ、食べ、食べ。ただ、食
We should do a daddy concept one time. We'll have to do that. Yeah. I'll come down your way to the beach maybe in the yeah, summer is a little yeah. bit better. He lives, I guess, south of me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Down in uh, Kanagawa. Kanagawa. Kanagawa, right. Kanagawa, yeah. Far, far away from Akihabara. <laughs> Different side. Different vibe. Oh my gosh, this looks so good. Thanks, guys. Get your ultra hot sauce in there. Yeah. <laughs> 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 cool. That's good. All right. Need a, oh, this is warm. Oh, warm guys, this is up. keeping me. This is keeping us wanna, warm. Let's cross, cross on the way. other side of the side of the street here. This is also quite voluminous. 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 Yes. <laughs> Voluptuous. <laughs> <laughs> it's a handful. Oh my god. I. I, I know them because I can I can I Leo loves the sausage Brazilian sausages that he has there and uh, and uh, every even when we walk by and don't get food they, they always wave and they're very happy and I love that he plays really good music outside of his food truck too so I'll just start dancing <laughs> <laughs> okay, right there eat it while it's hot Let's right and carry okay here we go eat the we can go into this little corner yeah here. we can come into this corner as long as there's a signal there. Oh, it's good. Mm. Mm. Very nice. It's funny, the signal's better under the bridge. Under the bridge. Which is bizarre. There's a couple of food trucks, right? If you go there re uh, frequently, they get to know you. And then they start giving you more food, that, like for free. Like, oh, and I added extra meat. Service. Yeah. Because they know that you keep on yeah. coming. So you don't, need, you don't need a point card. You just need to be friendly. A smile, maybe. Oh, yeah. I'm waiting for the hot sauce. There you go. Boom, down onto the shoe. The whiter than white shoes. Mm. It's really good. So this is guilt free because we burnt all the calories that we're gonna eat. That's our view. Walking through Tokyo. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah? Well, he put a lot of meat in there. Nice. Mm. Last time I saw Dean was um, down in Okayama. Right. We did the national parks, uh, some soaking in an onsen. That was, up our dad that was a really good trip. Oh. We've been down to Totoro and Shimane a few times, right? And we go down to the national park. Mm. And uh, well, totally different vibe to being in Tokyo, right? Oh, so yeah. It's all about local life. And oh yeah. Remember, we met that couple that were living out in the in the middle of nowhere, and they were crafting. Mm. All types of stuff out of uh, local wood, right? And we we were making chopsticks and the last one. And on this channel, you can see Dean and I much larger <laughs> <laughs> from the from the pandemic. We didn't get out as much, but the the two things two things that I remember the most are the cheese shop. Mm. They make their own cheese in the in the national. What was the name of the national park? Daisen Oki National Park. Daisen Oki National Park, and that particular uh, part of a uh, was. Uh, Hiruza? 
Yeah. Hiduzen. Mm. They make their own cheese and Hiduzen, really good dairy products. Oh my gosh, that cheese maker was like this filthy genius. You see like his apron with all these cheese mm -hmm. collars on there. All of it made from the milk to the cheese right there, this farm. The, the cows are like 100 meters away, mm. you know? Check out that video on cheese if you don't. It, it, um, it's like an edited video. You get to play with the cows. <laughs> I guess, I don't know if he gets a lot of visitors, but he's like, yeah, try this cheese, try this cheese. By the I, time we were like full of eating <laughs> cheese. Yeah, I think he's one of those like totally unknown. Like if you don't visit Hiruzen, you would never know that there's a cheese yeah. maker there, so. Uh, we took you'd never, know, you'd never know Hiruzen, right? Like, how many people have heard of Hiruzen? It's a plateau, yeah? Down near Okayama, inside. Mm. Between Totori and Okayama. Yeah. It's such a nice, um, like a mountainous and, and valley. Lots of green in there. I really enjoyed it. So people go there in the summer to to cool down, right? Or in the winter for like winter sports and you know snowboarding and stuff. You can ski there. Yeah. Mm. I see a lot of business people uh, going past in the river. I saw some cormorants, the birds that can also dive down and mm. fish. You see them float? I thought they were ducks and they're like, whoa, where'd that bird go? He's going under the water like a, like a dolphin. What do you know about these waterways? Are you trying to get out on a boat in here or? Well, I think this is the near the Kanda River. We're getting close to them. A lot of, Tokyo is a city full of canals, which is just amazing. You don't realize it Nobody because... Nobody knows that, yeah. Because you don't realize it because of this. We're underneath um, the highway above. And this is a story. During the 1964 Olympics, maybe around 62, 63, they started really quickly to improve the infrastructure of the city. So instead of, you know, making the highway from scratch, they just put it over the waterways, which is easy. Hmm. But it doesn't make the city look very good. So there's now a movement to get rid of these. To get rid of the, the highways from the... Yeah, and put them underground somehow or to move them to beautify the city again. Mm. In particular, Nihonbashi on the other side of Tokyo Station, they're doing it right now. Wow. Construction is ramping up. Is there any way we can take a boat trip? No, from these there. Canals? Oh, you can? Yeah. From Nihonbashi? There's a boat pier. Uh, not, I, I don't know how much it is. I think it's a couple thousand yen, but it's pretty pretty good. Um, let's go over the, uh, the area that we're walking. So we started this live stream about 50 minutes ago in the Ginza region of Yurakucho. And we've walked uh, not that far. <laughs> There's Hibia Park on the right side, the Imperial Palace on the right side. I'm going through the modern Uchi side. And our final destination is right there, Akihabara Station. You got messy? I only showed that video so you, the crowd, the, the viewers couldn't see me stick my face into this to get wow. the meat. I was like going deep into the paper.
And this is the route. It says it takes about an hour. We're not going to beat that. <laughs> Oh, I was so good. I have to pick up the scraps. But I need the Oshie buddy, big time. Oh, uh, I should ask them for a plastic bag. Let me run back. There it is. Ah, uh, that hit the spot. Thanks, guys. Uh, <laughs> oh. oh, that's so sad. We might have dropped a little bit of the scraps, so we're, we're, we're picking it up right now to make sure we, we clean up and leave the, leave the area cleaner than the way, how we found it. Oh, there's the, um, the cormorant here. The lovely ducks. You got any trash? Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. I'll be back. Okay. Dean is heading back to the uh, Brazilian Trudasco's truck. So this is the part of the live stream where you guys can ask me some questions and you can write in. Where are you from? Where are you watching from? It's always good to hear from you. Uh, see, uh, our audience is very global. We have uh, only in Antarctica, which is here from time to time, so I guess we're covering all seven continents. Not a bad thing. Um, <clears throat> again, like uh, I'm, I'm looking to see how my shoes are holding up. So far, not too bad. <laughs> hey, there's a Leo here watching from New York. Hey, Leo. Kentucky, awesome. Singapore, from Brazil, whoa, Finland, Delta BC, NYC, awesome. From Chicago, Cleveland, Mumbai, hey. Dubai, Indonesia, look at this, I told you, we're all over the place, that's awesome. We have such an amazing community in Singapore. I remember when, when I went there to do the meetup, and you can see the meetup actually on this live stream. We had over 100, 150 people that came. It was incredible. The turnout, ah oh, man. Kanai, Kanai and I were there in 2018. It seems so, like that, I got, you got so some yesterday. yesterday. It's like, what? Six years <laughs> ago? What? It's pretty crazy. Oh, here comes Dean now. Diana Martin, are you on the way, Diana? Random. Here comes Dean. All smiles. Hey. Blue steel. Done. All right. We left it almost, almost cleaner than we found it. <laughs> I don't think we're gonna get away with with all the sauce, but the water will eventually wash it away. <laughs> it is raining. On this rainy day, yes. Yeah. And away we go. Got you so samadeshta. Got you samadeshta. Thank you. That was a good meal. I'm glad that we stopped. Thanks for, for pushing me to make sure to eat because I was I was starving. Don't you feel so much warmer now? I do. My mouth moves again. The Japanese make some of the best umbrellas. Did you ever notice that? Da, 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 Is that da, da. the one that you have there? Yeah. The the ones that yeah. Look at that. Look at. The, the problem is I never buy those, those because I always lose umbrellas. Yeah, right. so. yeah I'm so scared of, of, of putting this down somewhere. Nobody steals them, right? Because it's Japan, but well, you just it's, forget it's it. very easy to just put it down I, and walk I, off I without it. I put it down it. on the subway or something. Yeah. This is Soto Boridori. Soto means outside, so this is the outer ring. Uh, let's take a right here. Soto Poridori. Or maybe let's go straight. I think we're going to connect up with Kanda Station if we just go straight. Organic wine shop. Wow.
You can see there's more construction. It looks like that they're gonna be putting something really significant here as well. A noodle shop right there, ramen. Scotland's in the house. We got some people from Scotland. Scotland. Awesome. John Lopez is, is having his wine right now. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Now you can see that the vibe is completely changed, right? Now we we're in a, more of a, the architecture is really mixed here in Kanda. You have like a like a, a like a patchwork of of eras from the 19 uh, late 50s, uh, 60s. Then there's the 70s, which is kind of funky, and the early 80s. And then there's the late 80s and 90s. And the 90s, it starts to get a little bit darker. That brute. Um, design, I forget what, what the architectural is called. You, we saw that all through Japan in the early 2000s. And then uh, today, you, that's what modern Uchi probably is. More modern stuff. But also you have more of these like, look at that, oh, cake. Coffee? A coffee yeah. shop. Yeah, we're gonna have to stop and get some coffee, Dean. I need to warm. Oh, did you smell that? Alright, welcome to Kanda, officially now. We're, we're well past halfway, which is good news. Let's take a right and go to Kanda Station. It's, you're right, how, how different. We didn't see any shop like this, right, in the whole of Tokyo. Yeah, older family run, like it looks in like that. a used clothing store. Yeah, Hibiya and Ginza, you don't get anything like that anymore. No. And also the signal is, is clear as day. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we are back. For Kanda, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, you saw that the, tr the train line was going by there. Oh, look at this burger! It's a barber shop. I get confused sometimes. The, the beauty salons look like cafes to me in Tokyo. This is an old school barber shop. Wow, that's cool. That is very cool. Yeah, classic razor shave. That's a, that is a really beautiful barbershop, Kamito. Interesting, I You should I totally I, grow, I could, grow a beard, just so you can go and do an episode in there. Yeah, I, I, you know, I don't think I could grow a beard. Oh, look at this! Between the buildings, this little, little teeny shrine, do you see this? Yeah. Dwarfed by his neighbors. Yeah. Fudo. Just, you see stuff like this and you, you, you can't move it, but they build around it. You're gonna see a lot of that here in, in Kanda. Because the buildings are smaller and everything is a lot closer, narrower than where we just w was in uh, um, uh, Maranouchi and the- Otomachi. The and, Otomachi area. Yeah. It's more intimate here, I think. Is Kanda the area that's famous for used or old bookstores? Is oh, that's Jimbocho. Oh, Jimbocho. Yeah, that's not too far away. Okay. That's, that's around here, yeah? And what um, a, ish, yeah, sort ish. of. <laughs> yeah, it, it's around the Imperial Palace. Okay. Uh, going a little bit more west, but right now we're heading east in the opposite direction. Okay. Going towards the Yamanote line. I haven't done one of these walking the street episodes in a very long time. You know what, the, one of the little traditions that they, I guess it's not a little tradition, they, they have those girls that give the Yakult, the Yakult girls. You can see there's a guy making uh. a delivery here by bicycle. But they've been doing that since like the 1950s or 60s, maybe be, before that. The Yakult girls, these little yogurt drinks, right? They have a they have their own uniform, don't yeah. they? And their, and their theme colors. And, yeah. I saw one the other day um, in uniform, and I was just like, "Wait, they're still doing that?" Look at the way they've renovated the first floor of this old 1980s building. And it's very easy for me because I've been here 26 years to notice that the architectural periods in a lot of the buildings. I don't. I get it. I'm not perfect, but I get it really close. 60s, 70s, 80s, you can see those there are... Honey Angel. Yeah, these... What, what do we get in Just honey? by the windows, you can tell this is 
like early 70s, late 60s. And then we have a brand new building right here. But in this area, a lot of izakayas, you see the flashing lights over there. They're, those are Japanese pubs where you can go in and get a beer for like 300 yen. Usually you can get a, a menu that is massive in size, lots of items on there. Try just about everything in an izakaya. And there's a Kanda station. You see the Yamanote line going by right there. What's your favorite neighborhood in Tokyo? Is it, do you have one that you like? Uh, probably, uh, do I pick a ku or a station? Maybe like, uh, like Ebisu like station. Ebisu yeah. Ebis station? Ebis yeah. okay, yeah. And I, I think I like it mostly because of familiarity, you know, it's just an area I know, they have, they have nice cafes there and no, no three lane streets though. Yeah, <laughs> Ebis is yeah. A, a certainly trendy place here. So we've crossed over, uh, we ate the Brazilian stuff around here, right? Mm. underneath the bridge and now we've walked uh, uh, across here and then we've been cutting out to the station we're gonna we're gonna walk along the rail line here and then once you pass Conda station we're gonna go over to this side of the tracks and cross over to uh, the uh, Akihabara so in my modeling days they'd often bring me down to this bridge because there's lot there's lots of places where the road cuts through under this uh, train bridge un under the train line Right. And then we'd shoot underneath it because it has oh, that yeah. kind of like <laughs> the atmosphere. grimy <laughs> urban vibe. Yeah, you could see it. I can I could take you up above here. That's underneath the Yamanote line and you can see it's got uh, I mean I would love to you could build a business underneath there. But if you go past Akihabara a little bit, they have a, a shopping center an art arts uh, st artistic street of local artisans underneath there. I forget what it was called, but it's a uh, uh, underneath the track about 200 meters past Akihabara station on the way to Okachimachi. Boy has the vibe changed! <laughs> kushikatsu restaurant right here. If you don't know what kushikatsu is, it's these uh, food on a stick from Osaka. You have that there, deep fried and they serve it to you, sizzling from the fryer, it's so good. Kamameshi, is that uh, hot pots? Yeah, it's, it, we're, we're cheap and cheerful now over this side, aren't we? We're like... Yeah, it's colorful, it's vibrant, it's uh, you know, louder, it's uh, chaotic, people walking left, right, <laughs> up and down, <laughs> here, there. And the Kanda Station again, um, you know, if you're coming at night, you're staying in the area, if you're staying in Akihabara, I would say come to Kanda for, for, for food. Right? I bet it's lively at night. Oh my yeah. gosh, it the is. The streets yeah. are full of a businessmen. It game. really is. It has a vibe. Um, Peter and I will go to a, a, a Chicago pizza restaurant called Devil's Craft, which is just down the street over there. There's Conda Station's uh, sign. We're going we're gonna to stick on this side of Conda Station and then uh, uh, cross on over when we get to the uh, next opening. so many restaurants and these these restaurants are, are much cheaper than in on the uh, Maranuchi side of Tokyo Station the sushi place over there nigiri sushi French bistro right there A lot of these shops have, have had um, renovations to it. And a lot of them, you know, when, when the pandemic hit, a lot of shops said, you know what, we're not going to make a lot of sales, so this is the perfect time to renovate. So we had a lot of, a lot of that taking place. You can walk underneath the tracks here to get to the other side. Hey. <laughs> I always thought this is kind of creepy, this sign. It looks like an alien. <laughs> Doesn't it? Look at his it's, arm. It's, it's, it's all very wibbly wobbly, isn't it? Yeah, he's like, and the he, girl looks like she has antennas. A World War II helmet. Yeah. yeah. I wonder who came up with that design. 
That the the uh, monster from that um, Mel Gibson movie. Uh, uh, signs. The signs, yeah. You remember that? <laughs> yeah. That part where he walked by in Rio de Janeiro, they had the... Uh, <coughs> he crosses yeah, like that, right? Ah! Yeah, like the Bigfoot pose. Yeah, yeah. And then they pause it and they go, whoa! I love that movie. Oh. <laughs> it's so creepy. <laughs> What do you smell? Dashi. It's Fuji. It's definitely Fuji Soba right there. This is where, when I was teaching English uh, in in Tokyo, would often have my my one coin lunches at the Fuji Soba, and uh, they make up like all the Japanese soul food for usually 500 yen. Okay, let's stop here just for a second. How my my shoes are. They're still too white, Dean. Yeah, you know, they're in very oh, good. Oh, oh, oh. All right. <laughs> that made a mark. Yeah, I feel it. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this, Fuji Soba. It's 580 yen for a bowl of ramen. You have, uh, now my, my favorite, I had the katsu kare right here. They're, they call it kare katsu, so it's reversed. That's so good right there. 960 yen, under a thousand yen, but I always got this, and they raised the price a little bit. The katsudon. It used to be 500 yen. Yeah, but put that into dollar. What do you think? Six. What's yeah, now like it's 600? about the same. Yeah. Six dollars. Actually, the price has gone up about 30 percent. It used to be 500 yen one coin at lunchtime, but uh, it was worth it, man. That is a good looking katsudon. Yeah. If you bring foreign currency here now. If you come from Europe, you come from America, even even from Asia, like you get a lot for your money, right? Oh, yeah. like, oh wait, they still kind of have it here. Cuts it on 580 oh, yen. So it's only gone up 80 yen. Oh, it's for the set. You get the cuts it on set. You get the yeah. soba, which is an amazing price. But just for the cuts it on, they raise it 80 yen, which is that's okay. But usually it was one coin, 500 yen coin, you'd be able to get your meal. Oh my gosh, and I. I Cuts it on, fill you, you up. You don't see that very often anymore. One coin lunch. I not, remember that when I first came. Not so much. Outside of Tokyo, they still have it. Osaka finds a way to do it. it makes me suspect on the ingredients <laughs> of this stuff. <laughs> so you can go this way to get to Akihabara, but we're gonna we're gonna take you across the street, um, underneath the old Honda tracks. I love this part of it because you have like the uh, pre World War II tracks underneath here. These uh, steel uh, garters. I guess. Part of the old infrastructure of the city of Tokyo, which, which uh, withstood the, the uh, Allied bombing of 1943, 44, and 45. Some of that's still apparent around Tokyo. And a lot of these were made from, uh, see, Japan had a treaty with the, with the UK and the US back then, not to build like a, something with their battleships, not to build as many of them. and, and will release sanctions or something. So Japan used the steel that they would make for battleships and turned it into bridges and, and earthquake proofing the city. And you have these super strong structures, super strong bridges along the Sumida River. The history of it is fascinating when you go back and look at it. The flower shop here on the right side. We're getting all You're range like an of smells. encyclopedia of knowledge of, of Japan, John. I've it's got like, an encyclopedia. It's amazing. Well, it's just, is that information correct? <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty close to it. I read, I read a lot. If you're making the, this all up, it's, it's very I read a lot, but sometimes my memory fails a little bit. That's why this is a social medium, right? It, it's great because people can check me and go, you know, that's not 100% accurate. I love that when people correct me. But so they it, should. But it opens the door. And I think it opens the door to, to go out there and do your own research, to find out more about it. And that's what really makes me excited about this format. Because if you, you, you look at the bridges and go, how did Japan come up with making this super steel bridge? It's like, oh wait, that was a steel that was going to be into a was battleship. Intended. It looks like a battleship. Yeah, right? which would have been sunk and uh, put on the bottom of the sea, but yeah. But, the, but instead of that, we have a super steel bridge. So sometimes war is not the way to go. Yeah. <laughs> Make I'd, some bridges. I'll take the bridge. Improve your infrastructure. I think we can make this light. Come on, let's make this light. <laughs> There's a post office. You have runners on, right? I do. <laughs> you shouldn't be fast. These are so comfortable. 
they are so light. This is not the typical style for John Dobb. This yeah. is. Uh, I should hold the camera and film you. And oh, so, really? <laughs> because because people like. I know John as having a certain image. There you go. Yeah. Can we get can we get a model turn or something? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Some karate kid in there. Peso knows what yeah. I just did there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a good look. The new fresh John for 2024. Love to turn the camera around. It'll Aki Hava to get some shots of that. Because we're, we're, Dean and I are going to be going back to that Allbirds place because they invited us to for the uh, uh, indigo treatment. So I'm, I'm trying to mess these shoes up a little bit so that the impact will be greater when we decide to indigo it. I don't know. How, yeah. Who buys white shoes? I don't know. I'd buy white shoes. You do? Yeah. Really? But then you, you do have Kanai to tread very too. carefully, don't you? Yeah, Kanai buys white shoes too. And I'm like, Kanai, really? They're going to get all dirty. So they, like, they look very good when you first put them on though, don't they? I, I guess, yeah, they do, but that's why I buy black shoes, because I know they're going to get nasty. Oh, I have indigo shoes. Yeah, well, you can wash these, apparently, yeah. uh, which is good. And they do look, well, they're definitely scuffed up now. Uh, so there's a bridge here in this part of, uh, this part of Kanda uh, is, now we're getting onto the um, a border with Akihabara, I guess you could call it a border up against it. But on the other side of the Kanda River, that's when you get into Akihabara. Now, Akihabara was a, um, like a stable town. It was a, a place where you would park your, your horses back in the day. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And it has evolved quite a bit. It turned into... It's definitely not that anymore. No. Oh, is that what you were talking about before? Uh, yeah, there's the loops. Yeah. Well, let's go take a quick uh, look. So they do. They have just... Uh, I didn't know they had number plates and they were... So they're classed as a... Yeah, they're because... They had a law that was passed, so they ended up being like a car. So you need to have a driver's license, oh, I wow. believe. But yeah, have you, you so ridden them big, before here? I, I've got a, a bike, a, a, a oh, scooter, okay. I should say. I, ha I have one, and mine has a number plate. But I thought that these loops didn't. So oh, these are for you putting your smartphone yeah, it's in very, there. They're very convenient if you if you do have a license. So yeah. I mean, it'll be a little bit difficult for visitors, but maybe look out for the bikes. Yeah, the the e-bikes. Ah, like that. Oh, right, yeah, right here. That, yeah. That's good. So these are um, all over. They, they used to be regional inside the city of Tokyo. You couldn't take them out of Chuoku, or you couldn't take them out of Chodaku, the, the different wards. There's 23 wards. Watch that car. Though. So you had to... Uh, so you had to stay to return it within the same place, and I guess Dokomo finally uh, found a way to get them all in this... The same place now you could just you tap you tap your IC card or something like this. Well, the process on how to do it is right there. Day day pass one one thousand six hundred and fifty yen. Okay, that's that's not too bad. It's like ten dollars, right? So, yeah, something like yeah eleven bucks. It's not too bad, and uh, there's a process to do it. It's, they made it so it was nice and easy, and you can see that you could just tap your your card or something. Um, they look, they look have heavy. I done it? No, I've got a bicycle. There's no need to oh. do it. They're heavy. Oh, yeah, they're pretty heavy. Yeah, they're weighty. But we, but they are electric bikes, right? So. These are clean. They look like they've upgraded it a little bit. But they're supposed to be like made to really get good wear. Good, they don't tear. <laughs> it's, a nice, it's a nice bike. Big basket. You can oh, look, throw your bike back in the basket. The, yeah. I know, I know that people go really fast in these. I've seen them pass me. I don't have a battery. And, on my uh, 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 on my bike, we have Leo, the one with Leo's the baby car. You have the, a Mama Chari? Yeah, <laughs> that one has a battery on it, and the other bikes that Kanai and I have, we don't have batteries. But uh, oh, yeah, a lot of them. But you could take these and return it to a different spot, which is nice. So people people do have like a 2,000 yen one month passes, where they can uh, uh, they commute to work with it. So they leave it by work, and then after work, they take the bike and they ride it back. It'll be a different bike. Right. You just never need to own your own bike. Right. Which is helpful if you live in a small apartment in the city and you don't have a place to park a bike, right? Well, no, you know, um, when right before the pandemic hit, there was a huge need, uh, right after it hit, there was a huge need for the delivery drivers for Uber Eats. And a lot of them, that they couldn't afford their own bikes, they would rent the bikes day by wow. day. Right? So they didn't have to, to buy their own bikes, they would rent it. 
And then when they saved up enough money to get a new bicycle, they did it like that. It's pretty cool, right? Crazy, so for, yeah. for 20 bucks, they, they were able to rent it for a month, make that money back delivering it, and then be, eventually buy their own bike. And that's how a business used to start. Now, you know, I guess you could get venture capitalist money if you really wanted to <laughs> these days if you're starting a business. You have a good business plan, but you know, it's, you, you're just starting by you know, pulling yourself up by your bootstraps. You, you don't get more bootstrappy than that. All right, we're at the end of Kanda, and right there is the uh, bridge. The last time I took this bridge was with Mike Chen, who is a food. He's a foodie. He definitely uh, can eat way more than me. <laughs> very, very smart guy. Very, very good with his content. Uh, I guess Strictly Dumplings is the name of his. Uh, this is this channel. is Akihabara Station coming up right now. Yeah, we made it. Heck yeah, that's 10,000 steps approximately. I would have known if I'd brought my Fitbit, but <laughs> I left it on the charger. But we didn't go in a straight line. We most certainly did not go in a straight line. So I've got, of course, stories about every single corner of Tokyo. That is expensive for parking. Wow. No cheap parking in this area. There's the Manse Bashi or the Manse Bridge. Over there. It, there's the vending machine House of Horrors. Do you know that, Dean? The, the vending machine House of Horrors. No, I do not know that. It's like, uh, I don't know if it's still there. Well, let, let's, let's cross, we'll talk about it on the way. This is the Kanda Fudei Dori. Ah, And this is just like a, a little secret pedestrian bridge that'll get you to Akihabara. How do I know this? Like HK you. Tokyo Eye. Oh, yeah. Like you've been I don't here know how many, times, how many times I did Akihabara with uh, Patrick Galbraith and Kevin Cooney back in the day, talking okay, like 2008, 9, 10, 11 right before the earthquake. I think we did four or five episodes here in Akihabara and I explored with NHK every single nook and cranny of this, uh, this side of the city. But you have, uh, once again, there's some of that battles, battleship steel. And this is the Washington Hotel. Oh, they, they got, the Denny's is out of business. The Washington Hotel is of significance because 10 years ago, 10 or 11 years ago when I did the episode here, they had a room dedicated to train otaku, train geeks. And the, the whole room had a, had a train that went around it. You could control it with a little panel wow. in there. Yeah, it's a little bit more to pay for that. You see the uh, uh, seagulls making a home outside of Akihabara <laughs> right there. But it was, a, and that, that's too bad that the Denny's is gone. They had a hell of a terrorist, didn't they? What? One heck of a terrorist they yeah, had. Yeah, it is. There. Apparently, yeah. you could, it's, it's available for business if you want. But in the summertime, the canals don't smell as wonderful as you might think. So, I don't know. It, it, they cleaned up their act. It was a lot worse about 20 years ago. And here we are. This is, you can hear the chimes for the JR station. Wow. It's like me rediscovering Tokyo, you know? Yeah. I feel like a, a tourist again. Well, that's what I think. Walking the city is really good. And if you do do that, you also burn off calories a little bit. You get your steps in. It's good for the body. You don't want to be sitting around all day. You didn't come to you, you, you didn't come to, to, you know, to just sit around. You want to get some exercise, too. And if you can get exercise and really see the city, that's the way to go. All the different vending machines. It, definitely the smells and the feeling has changed by coming in this direction. Let's cross the street over here. And the, this will take you right to Akihabara Station. We're going to be finishing our live stream underneath the Chuo, on Chuo Dori, underneath the bridge there, where you, I showed you. An hour and a half. It took us an hour and a half, Dean. What the heck? I thought I thought it would take us longer. Yeah. 
We get distracted, don't we? Uh, well, especially, I get distracted. I don't know what your excuse is, but everybody who watches this episode already knows, watches this series, knows that I get distracted way too easily. That's That's got to be a good thing, no? I'll, just, I'll be going one direction and go, oh, look at that. <laughs> oh, there's a Pokemon card vending machine. Wow. All right, and here we are. In this direction, you can already see Akihabara Station. But you know, these shoes are really good. You really, you got, you gave it a bit of a splash now. But yeah, they look, they look almost new. You look like a madman. Hey, there you I go, got, you got, got some it. nice dirt on there, yeah. Cool. All right, hang in there. Don't leave us yet. We're gonna get up to Akihabara Station and then make a right and then uh, to make a left and, and take you to that very famous site. Maybe we'll see the uh, Sobu Line go by that yellow line, yellow uh, train. We can we can go. But that's the intersection where the uh, that crime took place, the stabbing. You remember that back in the day? I do. Oh gosh, that was awful. I think that's like 15 years ago now. Guy drove through an intersection and then he got out and just started, you know, slashing. Hacking people, yeah. So, you know, they're, 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 Japan is a safe, really, really safe place, but sometimes people are a little messed up. This is weird. So even the Sega is gone. Look at this. This yeah. used to be the Sega yeah. or the uh, Giggle. It's like the one thing that I can Yeah, but it's not remember, even a Giggle but, anymore. Yeah. What the heck is this? Ichiban Kuji. It's popular, whatever it is. Yeah. Namco, which is a game center. So Giggle sold out their, their uh, shop to Namco. Oh, it's ever changing. There used to be... I got a lot of good stories about there used to be a guy who would rap this uh, otaku guy he would, he would rap uh, <laughs> yeah, for I know that. I, you remember that guy yeah uh, like a eye a contact instead of cleaner. just doing like yeah yeah he had this like really geeky rap song right in the corner here I don't know how many times and he knew me from the NHK show so I would like go high five or I would hang out and he'd be like hey how's it going you know. That, that shop closed and then that's when uh, uh, Sega took it over. And now apparently Namco. The hamster tube store is back. Uh, during the pandemic it had closed down and now it's, uh, it's, it's been resurrected. So the a lot of the stuff. Oh, hamster tubes, well, it looks like hamster, wheel, uh, uh -huh. hamster tubes, doesn't it? You look like such a tourist, like it's your, you look at around like it's your first yeah, time in Akihabara. Japan. Bright hey, look, go, go lights, around, go around. And, and just noises <laughs> everywhere, right? Like Dean's first time in Japan. Welcome to Japan. Oh, I've shot this scene so many times for PVs in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> this is Radio Kaikan. Now, they made this wider Radio Kaikan, and those will remember would, would jut out. The whole building is new, but it would come out to the to the street, and you can go underneath there. You know, Akihabara again it was a stable for horses back in the Edo period, and eventually uh, it, it kept evolving. After World War II, technology came in here; it became an electronic, like vacuum cleaners and TVs were sold here. Then, then in, in the 1980s, computers started to be the computer center. Uh, uh, and then in the 19, in the 2000s, manga, anime really started to grow. Then he had made cafes with the Thank subculture. <laughs> Diana! Uh -huh. <laughs> you made it! I made it! I made it! It was so stressful. But How I long were you it. here? Were you waiting a long time? No, I am triangulating information from Boss in Bogota. He's been telling me they are here. They are here. They are here. Oh, <laughs> <hey>. <laughs> well, how's your, how's your trip going? 
extremely well, super lucky I was for a week and a half in Hokkaido. Nice. And then I went to Iwate, to Morioka, yeah. and I had Akita Komagatake, and my guide was Queen and Ferris from Go North, yeah. Japan, from that channel. And okay. Uh, the mountain was beautiful and gentle with us. It was perfect. And then I went to Kawaguchiko a couple of days, and I saw the Fuji, and then I didn't. Uh, but it was super nice because I love the fog and the clouds and then I came here and I just arrived you know I okay. just I landed at Shinjuku station and host, my husband was like John, John is about to go live <laughs> and I was like where? where is he going to go live? <laughs> wait a minute let me, let me tell you oh, he says he's going to Akihara and that's how I I have been looking, going all over the place, but I found you! <laughs> yeah, there we are. Wow, we made it to cool. our destination uh, here, finally. Uh, yeah, I, uh, so Diana is, is from Colombia and she... Mexico, uh, but I live in Colombia. Uh, Col oh. Colombia. Yes. Me uh, Mexico, but Colombia now. And you were on our bus tour yes. a few months ago, which, which is not six months ago almost, which is crazy. Yes, we were like the guinea pigs, <laughs> like the first batch. <laughs> and it was extraordinary. Please, uh, when John organizes another one, you have to go. It was unforgettable, well, like that. really, yeah. really. Yeah, incredible. it's going to be a lot smoother. The guinea pig period is over now. <laughs> uh, I think I think we got, we got it all, the kinks worked out, but it was pretty smooth. I think that... Uh, the, really the team was. did a good job uh, with good. the accommodations and everything. Despite the hot, the heat, though, it was really hot. Yes, well, I mean, we're in Japan, it's like normal. That's very true. Yeah. We're going to walk out here to the bridge. What are you doing today? Just, I was going to just to the hotel and then go to eat something. Oh, OK. I was thinking about if I can find John and his friend, I'm going to oh. go <laughs> eat some ramen. And Okay. When do you go back to uh, Colombia? Where's Joss? Joss is back home. Yes, he's in Bogota. He's like super, he's super late over there. I don't know. Here's another Fuji Soba, Dean. Look at this. They're taking over. <laughs> 24 hour Fuji Soba. Katsudon for 580 yen. Yes, please. Are they the, the deluxe Katsudon for 1,000 yen? Did, now you, did you see that? They're really taking advantage of the tourists now. <laughs> the price is more here. That's all right. It's still real, relatively cheap and a good meal. And then right there you have the Gigo, which was the Sega World, the iconic red building underneath the Sobu line. This area, again, has evolved so much over the last 26 years that I've been here in Japan. And, and over the last 50, it's extraordinary the changes that have occurred just on this particular street. Uh, I hope it never changes nice and it sticks too. the way it is. A lot of the businesses that were abandoned now are, have come back. You can see uh, there are some shops uh, in this corner as well here. This one in, uh, is an, a late 1950s underneath the tracks here. So there you are, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. Dean, how was it for you? Good. Yeah. We are to a tour of Tokyo after 13 years of living here, so that was fun. Thanks. Thanks, John, guys. Well, thank you for, for joining us. I think you've burned up enough calories oh. to eat a cream brulee donut, perhaps. Wait. And you all know what I'm talking about on the other side. Maybe not. You've had the, have you had those cream brulee donuts? No, not yet. No, where? No. Oh. <laughs> where? <laughs> Down by the Yodabashi camera, the, the electronic shop. There's an alleyway. and uh, Jack in the Donuts, I think it's called. It's pretty good. It'll give you a sugar high. Thanks everybody for watching. We'll see you in the next episode probably tomorrow. Uh, shout out to our friends at uh, all, all Birds. Appreciate it very much. We'll be we'll there be on, Mar on March, March 26th. 24th. March 24th. I'll be there to, to dye these. Uh, uh, we're going to be turning this to indigo. Not too bad. Not too bad. Very, very comfortable shoes. <laughs> very <laughs> comfortable <made>. shoes. <laughs>